that ain't the best startup animation ever in existence, I don't want to hear about it. Very realistic sound, you say? Hey guys, hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This is Resident Evil Survivor. Yes, this is a game that's actually been fairly well requested over the years. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done it because recording from the PlayStation uh, in recent years has become progressively more difficult. Unless I want to spend, you know... Um, Hundred, probably hundreds of pounds on getting a HDMI mod for my PlayStation, which, to be honest, uh, no thanks, Chief. So, emulation, right? This game is actually notoriously difficult to emulate, uh, except there's a, a new sheriff in town when it comes to PlayStation emulation. Thy name is Duck Station, and Duck Station is incredible. It's absolutely amazing and it's literally perfect it, it plays everything um that i've thrown at it flawlessly it's just still under development as well and on top of everything else it has a really nice clean ui and it really cleans games up emulation has come a very long way you know it's easy to think that yeah, because the PlayStation 1 is so old and there's a few other options on the market that we had peaked PlayStation 1 emulation. You know, uh, you could say that the emulation had uh, reached its final form, but no, <laughs> no. Um, wow, I was, I was blown away by just how impressive Duck Station is. And please, can we skip this? We don't need to see this. So Resident Evil Gun Survivor, bit of a controversial title. Uh, some people really enjoyed this game. Some people did not like this game. Uh, let's go to option first. So we can uh, sit here and chat without um, the game rudely interrupting us. So, very controversial title. This was the first time we ever had a first person Resident Evil game. Uh, I remember knowing very little about this until uh, my brother, myself... And my stepbrother uh, stayed over at my house when we were kids, which we used to do fairly often. And what we would do, <clears throat> we'd spend the entire weekend uh, renting a, a random video game because that's what you did back then. You rented your games, pretty much. Um, games were very expensive back in the day like you know to be a kid so actually receiving a brand new game was kind of a special moment generally you'd only get one for your birthday or um you know if you'd been a very good boy or christmas that sort of thing at least that was my experience so we would rent loads and loads of games and uh, my, unfortunately, the rental shop that I used to rent from called Stop and Shop uh, is no longer around. It shut its doors uh, a long time ago. Now, I used to visit that place all the time. I used to spend all of my money in that place. And we actually rented this game. We had the light gun as well because my uh, stepbrother, Andrew, actually had the G-Con light gun. Remember those? Yeah, they were pretty cool. Um, we had some light gun games with the Switch and not the Switch, the uh, the Wii U and the Wii, but they were dog shit. They didn't even come close to, you know, the Wii Mote was never in the same league as the light gun. It worked, sure, but it wasn't the same thing. Anyway, we rented this and we we pretty much stayed up for forty eight hours over the weekend eating coffee and taking it in turns to beat this game did we beat this game yes we did we beat this game multiple times because this game has lots of 
Uh, is it fair to say lots? It's got a few different ways through. It's also a very short game. I will be showing off all of the um, alternate routes and stuff like that. I'm going to use save states and like when we get to a fork in the road, I'm going to show the different ways we can go and then we're going to pick one and we're going to you know keep that uh, essentially. It's been a long time since I've played this game properly. Uh, I'm playing a little bit ahead and then coming back and recording and, and, and doing it that way. So it's not, I mean, it's not blind because I have played this once or twice over the years, but I haven't sat down and, and properly played it for a long time. Just because when I've tried to emulate this before, this game notoriously has emulation issues. Uh, I think Black Shadow, another good YouTube youtuber actually who i'm thinking about it. i haven't watched for years but really cool guy uh he did this game and he had a horrendously difficult time from what i can remember of getting this uh to work but nevertheless our hero has arisen its name is duck station what a wonderful emulation uh emulation what a wonderful emulator uh shout out to my friend crystal He's actually now called the Games Guild. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the description for his channel um, for telling me about this emulator. And I was skeptical when I when I first heard about Duck Station. You know, new PlayStation emulator. Who cares, right? Oh, how ignorant was I? Anyway, let's go. We got a new game. There's normal and easy, but from what I can remember, this isn't a very difficult game i mean if if three kids sitting at home smoking humongous quantities of weed and eating coffee for a weekend can complete it i'm sure we can now the story kind of loosely ties itself in to the first two games at least but i mean not really Eh, you'll, you'll see. This game, this game didn't win any awards for story or gameplay or setting, enemies, art style, sound effects, music. It's very average, okay? And calling it average is a stretch. But as I always say with Resident Evil, even a bad Resident Evil game is a good time. Maybe except for Survivor 2, which I also have, which, oh boy. But yes, let's go. Resident Evil Survivor. In 1998, a disaster struck the quiet Midwestern residents of Raccoon City. An uncontrollable outbreak of the umbrella-created T-Virus transformed the city into an inescapable death trap. To stop the outbreak from spreading, Umbrella Incorporated was forced to wipe out the entire city. Okay, so it's the first three games at least. This was not the only location where an outbreak occurred. Yeah, you're going to get recycled sound effects from the first three games, and that's okay. You're not going to get away. Oof.
my headaches, I can't remember anything. My only hope is this gun. Um, okay, yes. I must remember. I must survive. So I guess we're going to be putting all of our faith in this gun. Where? Where am I? Oh. I, I don't remember anything. Yeah. Who are you indeed? Yeah, now this game doesn't control much like a Resident Evil game at all because it's a first person shooter. Uh, it, can it controls kind of as you'd expect if you played a light gun game back in the day uh, using a control pad. So we push um, R1, which brings up our aiming reticle and we can actually aim in full 3D now, which is interesting. It's not elegant, but it's interesting. Hey, Titan, you've just wasted an entire clip of ammo. Isn't that silly in a Resident Evil game? Well, yes, viewer, you'd be right, but not in this game. Because in this game, we have unlimited handgun ammo, and you better believe we're going to be using that. Uh, healing items are, from what I can remember, at least a little bit rare in this game as well. Uh, we move using the d-pad and we can turn around and we can aim at things and we can shoot and um, That's it, but it was the first time we got to see fully rendered 3d environments. Not sure if um, This came out before Code run yeah, it must have done um, But anyway, we're some unknown man who's flown out of an exploding helicopter Okay, now, this game looks very nice for a PlayStation 1 game. Uh, looks a lot better than the intro cinematic we've seen, doesn't it? Thanks, Duck Station. Anyway, let's continue. Let's get the fuck out of it. I think we can run somehow. We can run somehow. Yeah, good. And one of the great things about Duck Station, we can fast forward the emulator, which means we can fast forward the doors. Hello, man on the ground. Uh oh. I can't remember anything. I know that this was no way for anyone to die. I'm falling from a helicopter. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, we've got zombies. They are zombie models from Resident Evil 1 and 2. Now, we cannot manually reload, so every time we finish combat, waste the rest of your clip. Or magazine, sorry. Uh, so you can actually get a full magazine for your next fight. Because if you don't, you'll get hurt. You really will get hurt. The enemies don't really fuck around in this game. There is some cheesy things that we can do uh, that I will demonstrate and probably exploit, which I didn't know as a kid, but I wish I did. Uh, enemy, like zombies are not that tough. But anyway, we have keys. So we're Ark Thompson, apparently. All right, so we've got a rusted key, but we have three doors. We have door number one, door number two, Door number three. And this is where uh, we've only just taken our first few steps and we've shot one zombie and we already have a fork um, where the game will split into three different areas. Now, you'll go through three different paths, but at the end of each of those paths, the game will go back to a linear progression. Um, the, all these doors, once we go through them, will end in the same place. Uh, but there are different files and things to pick up and read. So to get the full story of the game, you do need to go down each path. And I think in some places there are four choices. And I'm not playing this game four times. Because I don't have the time to play this four times. But you, with the power of Duck Station, you can bring up this very handy menu, which I can actually show you. Uh, and we can save state. Just like that. Isn't that wonderful? Aren't emulators fantastic? Uh, so we can experience all of these areas. So with our rusted key, let's go through door number one. Uh, you don't have to push anything to use items either. Fast forward the doors. There we go. 
you just walk into where we need to go. Now you can do slightly more damage by shooting zombies and things in the head, but it's not really worth it. Not really, and it's also very difficult with this aiming system to do such a thing. So this is a church, huh? Umbrella, I guess Umbrella really does own this place. I will say that the music in this game is pretty good in places, actually. Slightly walk back what I said earlier. Oh, hey zombies. Get out of here. Now, you can hear more zombies behind us. Now, it's important to know in this game, if an enemy is behind you, they can't hurt you. Kind of an interesting flaw in the game. So if those zombies were behind us, we could just do that. And they would never hurt us. Uh, interesting. I actually noticed that watching... Um, I think it was Alpha Omega Sin back in the day. Now you want to be careful when you go around corners and things because... Yeah, sometimes there will be enemies. So we're going to take the chapel key. Cheers, buddy. And we're going to take this. An old clock is ticking. A clock winder seems to be attached to it. Lovely. Well, we better have that as well. Uh, that ticking of the clock as well is wonderfully um, atmospheric. I really like the ticking of the clock. Something about it is pretty creepy. Now, when we exit and re-enter rooms, sometimes enemies will reappear in those rooms. Don't question it. It is what it is. You know, it's not ours to reason why. Or wonder why, I guess, would be the correct saying. Hmm, it's quiet. It's too quiet. Let's keep walking around here. Oh no, zombies! Apparently, around that corner. Who ever would have guessed? Come on, you brain munching bastards. It's also a good idea to go center torso with these guys because sometimes you'll see they will buckle over and um, if you're still firing up here you're missing like that whereas if you're shooting them center torso you're always hitting them so yeah no anyway let's go through here I think I got that tip from Carcigen years ago I'm pretty sure ooh ominous music Coffee break. Alright, so what have we got? You've obtained the church manager's diary. Okay. Church manager's diary. October 7th, 1988. Today, the leaders of each section of the city, including myself, attended a meeting with the commander. The briefing was on the destruction of Raccoon City. Listen to that music. Actually, I'm going to take this back. The music's not bad at all. Um, during the conference, everybody placed blame on William Birkin. He betrayed the company and wanted to keep the G-Virus for himself. The commander told us that if there is a traitor like Birkin in this city, we should execute him immediately without question. I wholeheartedly agree with the commander's orders. This city is as vital to Umbrella as the laboratory in Raccoon City was. No, it's actually much more important. We must not allow a biohazard to happen in this city. We cannot uh, let Umbrella's efforts to buy the city and establish these billion dollar facilities go to waste. We should keep a closer eye on the behavior of personnel in the future. Yeah, looks like you failed at that, Chief. Interesting, so this entire city is bought and paid for by Umbrella. Interesting. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was there. Now, there's kind of an auto-aim system in this as well. So, we push R1 to aim. If we push L1, it will um, center our view. But if there's an enemy, it will snap us to the enemy. Doesn't snap the cursor to the enemy. All right? So, it's not like an auto-aim, but it will snap your vision towards the enemy, if that makes sense. It looks like we've got a pretty swanky arcade here. 
And we've obtained a green herb. We're going to be holding on to that herb. Well, we're not because we're going to be loading the safe state in a minute. But we will be holding on to a herb. Because healing items in this game, from what I can remember, are fairly scarce. Now, if you're wondering if all the zombies are back, I'm pretty sure they are. Oh, look at that. I'm talking shit again. <laughs> Never happens in my videos, is it? Me talking shit. <laughs> Uh, only most of them. Right, anyway, well, it looks like we've got another clock here. So, this old clock is not working. You've used the clock pointer. Oh my. Secret passages. Hmm. See, also, it mentioned in the um, intro about, you know, the Raccoon City incident was only one of many things that happened. Um, yeah. Can we get, like, some more of that, Capcom? There's many stories that happened at the same time. So, you know. And that's where emulation can go wrong, guys. You can over-fast forward. <laughs> and then an enemy can be right at your feet. I don't know why he didn't attack. That's kind of strange. Enemies are, are wonky in this game. They do strange things sometimes. I don't know. But yeah, spider. Spider in the basement. I love that fast forward ability. Oh god. Can we shoot him please? Yep, that was bad. See, he actually like poked us in the back of the head. But he didn't actually hurt us. Which was nice. Mainly because we weren't looking at him. It's a very odd... Uh, decision. I guess it was to help with how hard this game is because you can't actually save this game uh, in very many spaces uh, or very many places I should say. Uh, this game is kind of a one and done sort of thing. It's a, actually a very 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 short game. Uh, you know. Uh, you've obtained the church's rear exit. Lovely. Let's go. Now, I don't know if the spider's back. I'm pretty sure he's not. He's not. All right. Oh, these zombies aren't back. That's bizarre. Okay. I thought they did come back, but maybe not. Anyway. And here we are. We're through the rear of the church. Now, no matter which way we choose to go, no matter which way we choose to go, and that bloody dog got a bite on me. Yep. We're going to abuse the uh, vision system there. Because dogs in this game are really savage. Yeah, so as you can see, all three exits are here. So, kind of strange. Kind of a short little detour. But anyway, so we are now going to load the state. Maybe if I push the right button... That would be a better idea. There we go. So now we're going to load the state. And we're going to try the other ways. I can turn the borders back on as well. Okay. So. So we went that way. Let's try this way. Use the rusted key. Now I think this is like a restaurant. In fact, I'm certain this is a restaurant. And what would a restaurant be without kitchen staff? However, these kitchen staff are a little bit raw, should we say. Very raw. Well, they say you are what you eat. Maybe these gentlemen have been eating raw meat. Ooh, I don't know where he's going. Turn our back on him. Fucking gift wrapped ourselves for the boy. And uh, he started walking in a different direction. Bless him. Now, these environments are kind of interesting, but there's not... Well, the, they kind of look cool, especially for the time. But there isn't really ever a lot here. You've obtained the restaurant manager's file. October 4th, 1988. 1988? 1988. I heard an unbelievable story. A small town in America, Raccoon City, was destroyed last week. They said that all the residents turned into zombies and the city is now completely deserted. Umbrella Inc. is rumored to be behind the incident. 
but I don't know the details. Although the incident occurred far from here, across the sea, I can't help but feel anxiety. If Umbrella is truly behind it, I hope that this city will be okay. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. October 6th, 1988. I heard another interesting story. This one is about William Birkin, who supposedly destroyed Raccoon City. He was the creator of the virus called T, or G, or whatever. He tried to use the virus for his own purposes. Unbelievable. As, uh, as it may seem, he injected the virus into his own body and turned into a monster. Also, the virus leaked into the sewer, and it's rumoured that rats spread the virus around the entire city. October 8th, 1998. What should I do? One of the umbrella workers who came here for lunch mentioned that the T-virus is on this island. And he said that there's no possibility that an accident could occur here in this city, but I'm not so sure. I decided to work for Umbrella because of the money. But now I've grown tired of opening my restaurant for only Umbrella workers. There's nothing new or interesting left for me in this town. I guess it's time to get out of here before it's too late. Well, dude, I hope you did. I gen genuinely hope you got out of here because if you stayed, well... Probably one of the dudes we shot in the face. Yeah, so... Hmm. I left a few little details out about Burke in there. Yes, he did... Um, you know... Keep the virus for himself. But that was only because Umbrella was trying to take the virus from him. We got a quick one. We got a mover. Yeah, buckle over, bitch. Uh, yeah, a few details. And he did inject himself with the virus, but that was only in a vain, uh oh, attempt to save himself from his mortal wounds that Hunk's team delivered to him. So, yeah, you know, it's the whole one, two, miss a few when it comes to giving out information. Okay, reloading. Cool, we got ourselves another key. So, what are we going to do with the key? We're going to open a door. Generally, what we do with keys in Resident Evil. Use them on doors. Although sometimes we use them on um, things that aren't doors. Oh, hang on. I did miss one thing to show you guys. Yep, see what I mean? All the zombies are back. This guy's back too. Those guys aren't actually going to hurt me because I have my back to them. So they can't hurt me. Funny that. Must be something wrong with our back. I don't know. Yeah, see, this is what I thought. I thought the enemies respawned every time we went into a new location. So I did actually miss something in here. Pretty sure there's a zombie around this corner. Nope, maybe not. See, I'm talking shit again. You've obtained the green herb. Yeah, so if we come into this little wine cellar here, there's a green herb. Uh, literally, that's it. See, what, there is some flavor text, but only if you're, you know, running up against every item. Which, you know, is standard Resident Evil for the most part. Search everything, check everything, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I guess these zombies only come back once. Curious. But in this game, it's just not necessary, like, at all. So we've used the manager's key. And that... Leads us into this area. The restaurant proper. Interesting. I don't know why you're looking behind yourself, Ark. Old buddy. Kind of want to be looking eyes front. Zombies. Come on. Kill him. Right, he's dead. Reload. Now, there's actually quite a few weapons in this game as well. Uh, standard weapons actually do have ammunition limits but the handgun does not oh he actually bit us there we're actually getting a nasty couple of bites on us that was unfortunate we're actually fairly resistant in this game from what i remember to enemy damage okay yeah there is quite a few handguns in this game i think there's five they're all different, but they all have unlimited ammo. But your standard weapons that you will pick up, like shotguns, uh, and, and you know, the standard Resident Evil fare, they don't have unlimited ammo. Uh, 
<clears throat> and here we are to the dogs. The dog alley, which again, we don't really care about because we're going to load the steak. Go on, Fido. Get out in front of me. Fido. There we go. Really nice that we can abuse that. And to be honest, to get like a, a really good kind of um, score, I guess, you kind of need to do that with how rare health is. Anyway. That is not what we wanted, is it? There we go. Right, so we have one more way that we can possibly go. Now let's go this way. A lot of movie posters here. Curious. You've used the rustic key. Zombie, straight ahead of us. And some very um, non-standard Resident Evil action music. Yeah, a little bit strange. Usually when this pounding drum and bass is playing, there's enemies around. So, let's get to work on these brain-munching bastards. Clear the lane. Pull your socks up, boys. Seriously. There we go. Lovely. Now, this also being an emulator, we have access to all the game's uh, sharp cheats, which I have looked at. Some of them are quite interesting. Uh, right, so let's go upstairs. See if we can watch a film. Ooh, hear those birds. I wonder if that means we're going to be horribly murdered by birds. Probably. Projector. Voss is das. Okay. Cool. And we have another file. You've obtained the report on destroyed Raccoon City. Excellent. Slide. Raccoon City. After the destruction. After the destruction report. Surely. Okay. Fine. <laughs> it's not going to be perfect, is it? Um, date. August 5th. 1998 report from the UBCS member part one I wonder what member that is hmm. the biohazard that occurred on May 11th at Lord Spencer's mansion and biochemical laboratory ended on July 25th when the members of the stars team destroyed the entire facility as of 8th of the 5th 98 there are no signs of viral leakage in the surrounding area however we must continue to monitor the area with extreme caution our secret operative albert wesker is mia hmm. and is presumed dead however we have just received information that jill valentine and chris redfield are preparing to report the incident to the press and their police chief um yes that's kind of what they would do I request that this matter be addressed with the utmost urgency. UBCS Commander Nikolai. Mm -hmm. Date. September 30th, 1998. Report from the UBCS member, Part 2. At this moment, I am in the clock tower situated above Raccoon City. The zombie is overrun with zombies. It is safe to say that Raccoon City has been completely destroyed due to the biohazard. The situation is different from the accidental biohazard in the mansion. We suspect that it was intentionally caused by one of our company's researchers, Dr. William Birkin, the creator of both the T-Virus and G-Virus. Did he create the T-Virus? I can't remember. I have researched both biohazard incidents and notified that two issues need to be addressed immediately. The security of the virus stored in our worldwide facilities must be improved. Also, we need to re-educate our workers. Biological weapon viruses will surely become our primary product, so they should be handled as such. All personnel should take extreme care not to allow any more biohazards to happen. UBCS Commander Nikolai. Date October 6th, 1998. We've had extreme difficulties collecting the sample data for T-virus contamination and tactical data regarding the BOW 
The new BOW we call Nemesis was more ferocious and intelligent than we had expected. As a result, many UBCS members sent to the area have been sacrificed in the process of collecting combat data. I expect the researchers to analyze the combat data and use it to develop an even more evolved ultimate BOW. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure why that report is just there, you know, in the projection room of the local cinema, but hey, you know, don't question it. Don't question these things. Ah, what is this? Out of all the... Oh, hello. I don't remember him being there. I suppose someone's got to be here to watch all these films. Yeah, so out of all these spinning films, I say spinning films, 8mm films, there's only one spinning off in the distance. That's rather unusual, isn't it? I suppose we better pick that one up. 35mm film. Ooh, she's, she's a good film. There's a funky image of a cat there. Which is curious, because this game doesn't have a huge amount of details in the backgrounds. You know, there's only so much the PlayStation 1 could be expected to deliver. This is a used projector. Oh, it's second hand, huh? There's no film in it. Um, can we put our film in, please? Thank you. All right. Well, I suppose now we've loaded up the film, we better go have a little uh, look and see what's going on. Not sure what kind of film we're going to be um, looking at. And these birds are really annoying. You can stay and fight them, but why would you? Seems a little bit pointless. And looks like our friends are here. Sorry guys, the place closed. Too many of you brain munchers walking around. It's a very strange cinema as well. Like, you know, really unimpressive. I suppose they're all going to be like that after this uh, real life biohazard is over. And we've only got one screen. I think there's another zombie left. There is. Oh, look at him. He's dancing. Dude. Hey, you're pretty good. Although... Neo from the Matrix, you are not. Might not skip these doors. I don't know. Maybe some will skip. Ooh. I don't think this is a normal kind of cinema. They have a report on the destroyed um, city. And they have videos of viral cultures, I guess. And also, this looks like a really bad cinema. I mean, these look like church benches. They look more like pews. Shit pews, admittedly, but pews nonetheless. And we now have the theater key. What that say? It appears to be some kind of research document. Well, I'm glad you got that from that, dude. And it holds about four people as well. I mean, admittedly, if this is an Umbrella City, surely it can't be that big. And we got some more zombies. Because these guys just keep coming back, I guess. See what I mean? Sometimes the enemies just aimlessly and numerously respawn, and sometimes they don't. Whether it's supposed to indicate that one route is harder than the others or whatever, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's have a look at our menu. We did grab the herb, didn't we? We did. If you're wondering if you can go back and um, try all of the different routes, you can't. You literally can only pick one. Get out of here. You can see that action music stops. So, let's go through... The final door. Now we've got dags. Yeah, I don't think so. Fido. Ooh, stunned him. 
Oh god, this this dog, that dog was not neutered, man. He had some serious kahunis. Uh, anyway, this video is like 40 or bloody minutes long now, so we are going to give the game a bit of a save, and I will catch you guys in the next part. So, I hope you can enjoy this game with me. It's different. A lot of people didn't really like it that much at the time, and a lot of people still kind of look down on this game. Uh, very harshly, in fact, in some cases. But I think it's a good and fun time. So I hope you're going to enjoy this game along with me, guys. And as always, till next time.